witch. You're a witch. That you are a witch. Witches, whether we believe in them or not, their presence in film has charmed audiences into witnessing their magic for almost a century. While we see powerful women in cinema all the time, witchcraft has always been one of the easiest and most popular shorthands for feminism in film and pop culture. The way our favorite movie witches are represented on screen has changed a bunch throughout the century, but they're always an excellent representation of the feminist ideals held by the respective decade we see them in. While the first appearance of witches on screen is almost impossible to determine, we can start where most people do, The Wizard of Oz. We have this movie to thank for the popularization of both witches on film in general, and most of the iconography that would be associated with witches for decades to come, like green skin and brooms. Witches are old and ugly. The Wizard of Oz also established the famous good witch versus bad witch trope. Until then, history deemed strong ladies who refused to conform as witches and were to be antagonized because of the fear of powerful women. Portraying a witch that was righteous and good, such as Glinda, was innovative because it acknowledged that perhaps these qualities in women should be championed and even aspired to. The middle of the 20th century saw an interesting evolution of the portrayal of witches in pop culture. Things like The Witched on TV in the 60s and the movie I Married a Witch in 1942 took the witch out of fantastical lands and straight into the domestic household. Today, the idea of a woman using her powers to simplify her domestic responsibilities and better serve her husband doesn't sound super powering, but it's important to consider what these portrayals meant for feminism in this decade. Because of the standards implemented on them, women rarely had an opportunity to feel empowered or independent in their communities or at work. Portraying these housewives as having magical abilities really attributed a sense of purpose and agency to their everyday lives, depicting women as the most powerful figure in the household. It wasn't until the 70s that we began seeing a new kind of witch on screen, not coincidentally parallel to the feminist movement starting in the late 60s. In 1972, George Romero gave us Season of the Witch, which depicted Joan Mitchell as a bored housewife who sought witchcraft to feed her hunger for purpose independent of serving her family. To me, Joan is among the best examples of witchcraft as a vessel for feminism in film, because Romero makes it clear that only when Joan chooses the path of witchcraft for herself does she finally feel empowered and like she has a role outside of mother and wife. The latter half of the century introduced even more facets of feminism to the witch subgenre. The late 80s and 90s saw movies in which witches were a force, grouping themselves into covens and finding themselves to be more powerful that way. We were seeing groups of witches everywhere. The Craft, Charmed, Practical Magic, The Witches of Eastwick, and the list goes ever on. Feminism was now focused on the collective experience of women as opposed to their individual ones. While these movies focused on a stronger together mentality, they were simultaneously concerned with women in their adolescence or early adulthood, which gave agency and validation to the experiences and voices of women in all age groups. Movies about witches today seem to be the perfect hybrid of all the witches we've seen on film throughout history. One of my absolute favorites, 2015's The Love Witch, takes direct inspiration from the witches in I Married a Witch and Bell, Book, and Candle. Anna Biller takes the feminist ideals articulated by these films and places them in today's world to represent the progress feminism has made since then. The whole history of witchcraft is interwoven with the fear of female sexuality. They burned us at the stake because they feared the erotic feelings we elicited in them. Later, they used marriage to hold us in bondage and made us into servants, whores, and fantasy dolls. 2015 also brought us The Witch, reminiscent of period pieces such as The Crucible, but concerns itself particularly with the hysterical fear of the other that seems to be timely and appropriate in today's world. <laughs> you two of them frozen! Let go! No. You killed! My no! children! No! You killed that father! You killed that father! Where witches on screen will go from here is definitely something to look forward to. Intersectionality in our feminism today promises the presence of more non-white witches on screen, which we've seen some of on television with sensations like American Horror Story Coven. There is no denying that the evolution of feminism has been perfectly represented by our favorite witches in film throughout the last century. The witch was used for centuries to isolate powerful women, condemning us for finding our own strength. Because of the way the witch has been characterized in film today, she is strong, empowered, and we are proud to carry our own versions of her inside ourselves.